So you may know rice as a kitchen staple featuring in tons of dishes around the world, but what do you know about the actual plant? Let's dig deeper. So uh, we are in the water lily house at the moment, but strangely enough, we're not going to talk about water lilies today. This plant that we're going to focus on today, you're definitely going to know. You might have even eaten it for dinner last night. We're going to talk about rice. It's hard to imagine a world without rice. You can steam it, fry it, turn it into sushi or rice pudding. You can even use it to dry out your phone after you've dropped it in the sink. But how much do we know about the plant behind some of our favourite dishes? And here we're growing Oriza sativa, which is the Asian rice. Rice was cultivated in lots and lots of different places around the world. So we've got rice coming from Africa, America, but this was the species that was mostly used in Asia when it was first domesticated, if you like, made for us to eat. So you can see here, it looks like a grass. It's not particularly interesting looking. And at the moment, it is in its flowering stage. The flowers are only just coming out. And I suppose what we should really be calling them is an inflorescence. So it's a whole group of flowers all together. You can see at the top, we do have some rice coming. These ones, the oldest. These ones were planted a month later. And then right at the bottom, they were planted a month after that. So we've planted it in succession, which means one after the other. This is a really good thing that you could try out in your veg garden as well, just to make sure that you don't get a glut of one thing. While we're here, I'd love to show you the plant itself. I'm going to get one out and it's going to be one of the ones that's now producing seeds. So hopefully we'll be able to get some rice from it. So unfortunately that means go right to the back. <laughs> I want to get out the root system to show you. This is one of the maturer ones. So let's take this inside and dig deeper. We're now downstairs in the palm house. This is our personal kitchen, if you like. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through the rice plant in a bit more detail. So what we have here, and yes, this is a different plant because it's massive. Um, I managed to dig up this one with a bit more roots on it. Um, we've got a very typical grass and really the simplicity is part of the reason why this plant is so popular to grow and so easy. We'll go down from the top, we've got the, um, the leaves, the stem. The stem is really only made of curled up leaves. And then at the bottom here, you can see these really fibrous roots. And that's so common of all grasses around the world. Um, they don't have um, really thick roots. They don't have tap roots like what you might find in trees or dandelions. Um, they're really, really thin. And this is just a really good way of collecting as much nutrient as possible and keeping them on the ground. But they're quite shallow, I suppose, rather than being deep down. So all of their moisture would have to be near the top. Then as we get to the top of the plant, we have the flowering structure. And now we've got rice developing here um, so we have the seeds now what i was talking about before with the inflorescence the collection of flowers if you like incredibly simple and not really what we would expect to see normally normally we think about kind of roses or um, hibiscus flowers anything with bright petals and the bright petals mean that it would be attracting something they're there for a reason. With these flowers, they don't need to attract anyone because they're all wind pollinated. So inside here, every single rice that you see here would be an individual flower. So the pollen would be outside of here, just dangling, and it would just be brushed off by the wind and then attach onto the female part, simplifying a lot. So the female part would then produce the, the seed. Um, and that's what we've got here. We've got the, the babies developing, the rice. And I've actually collected some of the rice. Now, this is our first time, well, my first time, 
uh, making a paddy field and I've learnt a lot let's just say <laughs> so I don't think that this is the best rice in the world and I think that many people who do this professionally would laugh their heads off at me but what we have here is lots of rice so what is rice well it's a very good question really rice is the seed from the flower on the plant um, now there's lots of different bits to it so there's the husk which is the kind of inedible rough outer layer that protects it so what we have here is the seed itself and we've got the this outer layer is the bran and then inside that we've got the germ and then there's the starchy stuff that we eat as food um, so you can see the husk is sitting there now this one looks green, uh, that's probably because it was a little bit early to be taking off. Oh, this one's white. That one looks a bit more like rice, doesn't it? So this one would have been um, harvested at the right time. Uh, so that's a nice mature one. So if I boiled that up as it is now, that would be brown rice. And if you remove the bran, then it would be white rice, which we have here which is nice and sticky rice. So this would probably be medium grain rice. And of course, there's so many different types of rice. So we have about five different species around the world that are used to produce this grain, which is great because often we rely on one species to do everything. And if that one species gets a disease, then we just don't have anywhere to go. With five species, hopefully, that means that we've got a little bit more chance. Saying that, there are 40,000 different cultivars of probably one species. <laughs> there are loads of different types of rice, and they're all used for different things, different dishes. They add a different flavour, they might add a different texture. So I studied agriculture after I went to uni um, and I'm really interested in how um, we grow plants for food and how farming and agriculture kind of feed into this thing of um, environment and conservation and how we can all work together. Um, so I really wanted to um, kind of grow rice as a paddy field because it's just letting people see those agricultural systems up close and personal. Now, I'm not saying that this is a proper paddy field by any way, but a lot of time we will notice a plant here and I could say, oh, that's rice. But then to put it together that this is how it's grown and then that plant then becomes the rice on our plate. Joining up those dots is quite hard sometimes. You can see how we try to build it this corner where the soil has come away you can see the bare bones of it so we've got soil and moss on top so the moss is just like a nice cover to make it look natural then underneath that we've got some netting just to hold the mud in place that netting used to be used to go around our tree circles here at Kew and they've decided not to use it anymore so I took it. Um, underneath that we've got a, um, a waterproof lining and then below that there's wood, there's scrap bits. We try to form these organic shapes from various images that I found online um, from the terraced slopes of Yunnan um, and we just try to kind of evoke that feeling um, with the shapes here um, on a much, much smaller scale. Um, and hopefully it's worked out. And actually, you can see we've got a stray rice. Um, so yeah, he's obviously enjoying himself. So rice is an incredibly popular and important food crop around the world for humans. Um, and that is why we've been putting so much effort into finding out how we can protect it in the future. So we're talking about climate change having a huge effect on it, reducing its yield um, after 35 degrees, it becomes sterile. Um, so Q and partners around the world have collected what's known as crop wild relatives. So this thing, which is a crop, it's an agricultural plant, we have changed this plant over years of us being farmers. What we've done 
is we've bred it to be um, as beneficial and as productive as possible. So this has now got quite large seeds. This has got a lot of seeds on it and a lot of seeds means a lot of food. Um, what the crop wild relatives means is that we're really looking for where these crops came from. Um, so they might be plants that look a bit like this but have very small seeds or they might look um, actually very different, but they would have um, the bare bones of what this crop looks like now. Now we, the focus is going to be on trying to figure out if those relatives have some kind of X factor that helps them to deal with climate change or any of the future problems that we might have. So are they better adapted to uh, living with drought? Are they better adapted to um, lots of heat? Maybe those ones could be bred into our crop plant and really help us in the future. Rice here at Kew may not be in the water lily house all the time, but you can definitely still find it somewhere. So it'll either be in the water lily house or the Princess of Wales. That's because nothing in the water lily house is permanent. We actually change our planting every single year. So whenever you come, it might look completely different, but that's the joy of coming to Kew. Thanks for watching this episode of Dig Deeper. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to learn more about the work that Q does, visit our website for more information.